What is it that you think guys should know that they don't know when it comes to divorce in the Western world? Um, I'll start because I see, you know, you guys kind of, you know, chuckling at a few things there in the notes, which I've missed the opportunity to get into. But um, I think that what guys need to know that they don't know that they should be more attentive to is they need to spend more time planning the exit properly. Um, the odds are stacked up against you. Um, the woman tends to be the leave or and the man tends to be the leave. Uh, like women announce a divorce about seven out of 10 times. Um, so there's not a lot of planning that goes into it. And they usually just kind of like go along for the ride, not knowing what they're going to get into. And I'll just share this one story very quickly before I pass it off to the rest of the panel. I had a coaching call with a guy yesterday. Uh, he was a Canadian guy and he booked my time to talk about uh, getting through the separation period while still stuck in the matrimonial home and not losing his sanity. And we kind of got into the discussion and as, you know, to basically sum up a long story, his wife was treating him like a nanny taking care of their daughter about, well, we're going to say like more often than not, it was about 80% of the time. And after the house would sell and he moved out, he would have visitation rights. And I hate that word. Visitation rights is completely, it's, it's really obnoxious because no father should have visitation rights to his children. Um, the children should have equal access to both parents. They do far better when they have equal access to both parents. You release them upon the world, uh, you know, a much more useful member of society. So it's the whole planning concept that I think guys don't get. They kind of like go with the punches and they think that oh, everything will be fine if I just follow her her lead, so to speak. Anyway, I want to pass it off to you guys. Who wants to take up that uh, question next? What do you think guys should know that they don't know when it comes to divorce? Okay, well, I guess, yeah, uh, I I guess I'll go. Well, either one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rolly. You got it. I'll go no, I was just going to say, is I, I get a lot of guys. I mean, some of the guys that I counsel are going through divorces right now. And uh, I, it, I'm kind of a little bit out of my element here because I've never been through a divorce, but I am a child of divorce. Um, and uh, I have dealt with enough friends and dealt with enough guys that I counsel that I think I can at least speak ed, you know, educatedly on, uh, on what, what you guys should look for. I think one of the things that I, I think guys really need to understand right now is like, um, I think that I, I get a lot of calls from these guys who would say, Rolo, I'm getting married in such and such a time. Uh, should I get married? Or they want my permission to say, you know, to get married. And I always tell them that the first thing that they need to do is they need to go and they need to download um, or rent the, uh, the documentary called Divorce Incorporated. And if you can watch that and if you can get through that and you can understand what's, what you're signing yourself up for, when you're getting married and if you can you know if you can understand and make an educated you know decision for yourself after having watched that then you know at least you have at least you're going in with your eyes open i think but uh i, I would suggest that anybody who has a problem with uh, with divorce right now or is is going to uh call in here and tell us their stories today um I think you should, first of all, you should go and watch that movie. Um, it, it really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff um, when it came to like, especially the, the legalities of things and the, the industry that has sprung up around divorce. Um, there is a, a verifiable industry um, for marriage and then that marriage industry feeds into the divorce industry. And we've got guys who are lawyers who are specific lawyer, women as well, um, who are specific lawyers who who have made a living on perpetuating divorce settlements because the, the longer it takes, the more money that they make. And I think that that's another aspect that a lot of guys don't really think of. So when you're preparing for an exit, if, if, the, if you see the writing on the wall, I think uh, it's important to, to see that because like what, what, um, what Rich was just saying a minute ago is uh, most women usually check out of the marriage long before the guy does yep. um as we said most uh most beta guys most guys are beta and so they want to make things work out every last guy that i've ever worked with who uh who wants to get his wife to start having sex with him again uh every guy who is facing down a divorce or is considering a divorce they don't want to get divorced they want to make it work out they all want to want to find a way to to you know if they if you could just find the magic words or the magic formula to to say the, the right codes. things the yeah cheat codes. Yes. Like the cheat codes i can play in god mode yeah that yeah. kind of shit. um they really desperately want that they don't want to get divorced and i, I think it's really interesting because a lot of most of the most of the women that 
that sign up for this or that decide that they're going to get get divorced have already checked out of the marriage long before like six months a year beforehand and they they're already a lot planning. of planning a lot of and planning on the extra from my from my perspective from my angle it's like when you see when you see women like just killing themselves in the gym that's planning okay <laughs> when when they've never been in the gym before and they get a personal trainer and they're deciding you know they're, they're they're planning to to exit the 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 marriage uh, if anybody has read my second book, Preventive uh, Medicine, there is a specific time in a woman's life. Usually it's right around her middle 30s. And if she's been married, say, since her late 20s, that's when she's starting to consider an exit. That's when, you know, it's, it's, it's this idea that I better make my decision and get out of this marriage before I'm 40 and I can't do anything else after this. It's, a, it's at that point, uh, they call it the seven year itch. It's like seven years after they've been married, that's when they decide uh, I need to get out of this marriage while I still have my looks and I can right. find something better. There's actually there's actually two um, um, milestones. There's year seven, seven and then and year 19. 19. Yeah. Seven, seven is when women figure the kids are more independent and they can exit. They can look mm -hmm. after them. They can still have the freedom, go out. And then 19 is when they move out, basically. So there's those yeah. two windows when that. Yeah, there's the, um, yeah, it's a, I'm glad you mentioned that too. Cause like right around 19, 20 years is when you're going to be an empty nester. And that's when you got to look across the table at her and say, what do I really have in common with this woman? And um, I mean, I, I remember, I mean, I've been married for 22 years. Uh, I attribute a lot of the success of my marriage to being red pill and to having that awareness. And there's probably going to be a million MGTOWs in the chat right now going, don't you know how uh, dangerous it is? I here can't believe you would say this. I'm not, blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I'm not particularly anti-marriage, but I am anti-marriage in this era. I am very much, I, I think marriage actually had a point and had a purpose in our past. Uh, I mean, we can, we can discuss uh, the, the, the benefits or the, you know, the detriments of, of uh, in quote unquote, enforced monogamy according to peterson uh but i i think that in this day and age it is you know ever since the sexual revolution and you know like just say the the late 60s i think that it has become increasingly more and more dangerous and that's what we see in in uh, marriage rates right now we see guys who are just simply looking at this you don't even have to be migtow you just look at this and you say you know what this is a bad deal yeah you don't even well, have it's to a really bad deal i mean like any yeah. guy that's even a guy that that might even potentially even lean into the, you know, the far MGTOW area would just look at it and go like, look, you know, would you jump out of a plane with a parachute that's only guaranteed to open half the time? Right. Like well, that's why I tell the guys, you know, say, you know, if, if you're going to be married, if it's, if that's something, if, especially if you have like religious convictions or something like that, and you're thinking, okay, I'm, I, I don't want to have sex until I get married. Well, if that's your case, then you owe mm -hmm. it to yourself to be as red pill aware as you can possibly be. And you need to be able to, to be the person who is the primary in that relationship, you need to be the dominant masculine one in that relationship. You need to have the frame that she is entering into. And you need to definitely be, be the, the decision maker. And if that is in any way challenged, if that is in any way, you know, something that you, you if you think that, you know, it's all about egalitarian equalism, I, we're gonna play equal in our, our relationship, you are headed for disaster. And I mean like, not, not just financial disaster. That's another thing I think people don't th understand is like when you get divorced, it impacts your kids, it impacts your finances, it impacts your family, it impacts your friends, and it impacts you for the rest of your life. So you will always be bound to that, especially if you have kids, you will always be bound to that person no matter what. I don't think people really realize that, particularly women. Because when I think that, uh, I've discussed this with Dalrock a few times, that there is what we call the divorce porn industry, where it's like this eat, pray, love narrative, where yeah, they, they sell love. women on this idea that all you, you know, uh, you know, Stella's got to get her groove back. You know, you're just gonna go <laughs> to, you're gonna divorce your husband, and you're gonna fly off to Jamaica, and you're gonna find some guy with a big dick, and you're gonna have a, a real fun time, and you're gonna get back into being your who you are and your real self, and. They're going to, I mean, even the, even Fifty Shades of Grey was selling women on the idea that if they just got rid of their boring beta husbands that they married when they were in their epiphany phase, that everything will be all right. And then it's, it's a better deal, but they don't, they don't consider the fallout that comes from that, from, from the family and everything else. So, I mean, maybe, maybe that's where, where I should begin with all this is like, you know, when it comes to the women who are deciding to get divorced uh seeing the signs for guys is very very important so and that's my two cents 
All right, let's uh, throw it off to Donovan. Uh, what do you think guys should know that they don't know when it comes to getting divorced in today's world? Yeah, this is interesting. Um, in light of tonight's, uh, you know, middleweight title fight between uh, Canelo and Triple G, uh, I don't know if uh, I think Carl Rollo is definitely old enough to remember this. Uh, Richard, I know you are. I'm, I'm, I definitely am. Um, back in February of 1990, uh, Buster Douglas. Uh, versus Mike Tyson. He enters the ring against Mike Tyson as a 42 to 1 underdog. Now, here's the thing nobody thought that Douglas was going to win the fight, not even Buster Douglas. Like, he can say, Oh, I had all the confidence. No, dude, like, you plan to get knocked out in the third round. Like, this, even when, even when Buster Douglas won the fight, he couldn't believe he won the fight. So, Buster Douglas's manager said to James, He says, Look, dude, we don't have a snowball's chance in hell to beat this guy, okay? But we're not just going to go in there and take a dive. This is what guys do when they see an imminent divorce. They said, this dude is 37-0. and 0. He's got 35 knockouts. But Tyson hasn't been past the third round in something like 14 to the last 15 fights. So if he can just survive past the third round, we might have a chance. You've got a 12-inch jab reach advantage, right? So you can keep him away. And this is exactly what Buster Douglas did. If we make it into the later rounds, go to the body, take his win, and maybe we can get out of here without getting knocked out. Maybe we can lose in a majority decision, maybe a split decision. Well, of course, Buster Douglas famous, famously knocked out Tyson in the 10th round and shocked the world. Now, here's the thing. Ty and stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this. Tyson was not at his best on February 11th in 1990. Number one, he didn't train. He split with his longtime trainer, Kevin Rooney, went with a less experienced manager. He had this public divorce, of course, with Robin Gibbons. His life was spiraling out of control, of course, because Don King's hands were in his pockets, allegedly. Dude, they didn't even have the end swell um, uh, cold compress in his ring. They had to use a rubber glove with ice in it to keep his eye from swelling, and that didn't help at all. He was literally fighting with one eye for the second half of the fight. But let's give credit where credit is due. Team Douglas had a plan, and that's why they won the fight. Divorce is much the same way. When a man walks into family court or divorce court, guys, we know he's got no shot, right? Longer odds even than I would say Buster Douglas. The fact that our court system is so obviously heavily biased towards women, they are now women. They're now incentivized to file for divorce because in all likelihood, they get full custody of the kids. They're going to get entitled to half of the man's present and future earnings. You know, they get the, the family home, the dog and all that stuff. But these scenarios happen, Richard, when men just go in there and play dead. Just like you said, they, they think, well, there's no need in fighting this because I don't have a chance. So I'll just do whatever I'm told which is the same as a man accused of murder getting a court-appointed attorney who will basically escort him or her to the electric chair. What men don't realize is that they have, in order to, to keep from getting taken to the cleaners, you gotta have a plan. So to answer your question, what do men, what should men know that they don't know? The first thing, and I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Number one, you have to accept the fact she's gone, man. Dude, a lot of men, just like Rolo said, they they make the egregious mistake in thinking that there's a chance to reconcile. Men need to put this out of their minds. Dude, she's already fucking other guys. She already has a boyfriend. She's already moved on. Men who do this are delaying the inevitable. The inevitable. Now, sometimes she'll make you think there's a chance, but she's setting you up. That's a manipulation technique. She's doing this because she wants more money, more child support, more of your shit. It, it, guys have to know not to let your soon-to-be ex-wife not to tempt you with possible reconciliation. That's false. Here's another thing that guys should know that they don't know. And I've been I've been through a divorce. My divorce was easy. It cost me 12 bucks. We didn't have any money or kids. So it was very uncomplicated. I am very fortunate. And I don't know, maybe the red pill God smiled on me because I could be in a very different place had the pendulum swung either, you know, in either direction, any one of the crazy scenarios I've been in. Don't move out, guys. And the reason why you don't move out is because that could easily be characterized by your soon-to-be ex-wife as abandonment. If the house is also in your name, and it probably will, you have every right to be there as she does, right? Now, again, this isn't legal advice, but ask your attorney. If she asks you to move out, guys, don't move out. You live there too, okay? Here's the thing, though. Don't kick her out because now, now, what, she's gonna, now what is she going to say? She's going to say, well, he kicked me out. She'll take the kids to her mom's house or her friend's house and she'll say, well, he kicked us out. He abandoned us. If you move out or if you don't move out, she will probably end up leaving. But you have to make sure that you document that, that she left on her own accord and that you did not force her, right? Now, again, you have to talk to an attorney about how to establish that she left of her own free will and volition. Again, she'll also take the kids. Um, she'll also take the kids and say that you kicked her out. One more. This is very, very important. 
be careful what you write, say, or text. Actually, actually, I've got, I've got, I've got one more after this one. Here's, here's one you really have to understand. And I can go on, I can go on like this forever, but I'm going to end it here. Do not get your family and friends involved, guys. Listen, if you're going through some shit with a woman, I know it's hard to keep the shit all to yourselves, man. But don't tell them anything. Don't tell them details. Don't do anything. Because here's the thing, man. Your soon-to-be ex-wife could get information out of them, especially her family members, and use what you've told them against you. You can be venting to who you think is your friend and tell her, that fucking bitch cheated on me. I could kill her. Well, guess what? Your buddy can inadvertently tell her, one of her friends, this gets back to her. And all of a sudden now she's in court saying, well, he threatened to kill me. Listen, don't think for one second that a judge won't disingenuously mischaracterize a figure of speech as a real threat. Listen, do not communicate with her family, her family or friends. Don't say anything. Definitely don't communicate with her family because they'll they'll they're they're, they're looking to fuck you over too. Um, so it, I, I could talk about this for ages, but 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 th these are just a few of the things that um, that that guy should know. I actually have an entire episode on this. Episode three twenty two: How to Win Your Divorce. Go to DonovanSharp.com or Patreon.com forward slash Donovan Sharp. I think it's like an hour and a half episode. Um, who's up next, Carl? What do you got to say? Uh, what do men need to know that they don't know when it comes to divorce? Well, I think it's the first thing is with what marriage actually is, because a lot of guys, it's just a personal the formalization of their relationship with a woman. But it's a social relationship because it gives you a certain esteem in your community. It's a personal relationship, obviously. It's a family relationship because you're technically joining two families together. So they have their say about it. But most importantly, it's a legal and a financial relationship. And that's inviting the state into your personal life. And marriage is a lot like heroin. It's very easy to get into it and very difficult to get out of it. <laughs> if, they, uh, if you start it the right way. So I'd say document everything from before you get married all the way through your relationship and make sure you keep all this documentation in a location that only you have access to. Yeah. I would say something like a safety deposit box, because if there's questions about child custody, if there's questions about money, anything, if you can not document it, it's word against word. If you can document, you know, here are seven emergency room visits while I was out traveling for work. Here is the... Um, receipt from the rehab facility that I paid for my wife to go into, etc. then you have something to back yourself up with. Yeah. And secondly, always keep, you know, a war chest, which isn't, you don't have to keep hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I saw George Bruno tweeted this out about this friend of his who's been a stay at home dad for something like 15 years. And his wife decided to branch swing on him because, you know, a woman, women may think that they can have a stay at home husband, but, they can't. It just doesn't work. So, but this guy, he doesn't have any money. He hasn't had a job for 14 years. Her, her house, oh, her cars, everything is in her name. So he's basically out on the street now with nothing to his name. And, and he just put himself in a really bad situation. And a lot of guys do this because they don't realize that once that divorce is filed, a lot of women will max out the credit cards. They will switch everything from joint accounts to their accounts, etc. So make sure you keep your own accounts with your name on it that they do not have access to. They don't even have to know about it. Big fan of Donovan's approach of having a safe stashed somewhere that she doesn't know about with some cash in it that you can grab when you need it, along there with you, you know important uh, ID doc. ID documents, you know, pink slips for cars, etc. Just document the crap out of everything. Even if you have a period where you're fighting a lot and she's acting out, record it. Everyone can have a recorder on their phone. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I should really know about the whole um, war chest thing, well, in Canada anyway, there's a form you have to sign called a 13-1, which declares your financial status to the other side before you guys finalize a separation agreement. And it's a legally binding contract, so you're not supposed to be deceptive and say, I don't have 17 gold bars buried off-site on 13 acres <laughs> that my grandfather has sort of thing. But like, let's be honest, um, the thing with divorce is like, you know, Donovan was saying and many of the others is the odds are stacked up against you. It's like going to battle 
with the US military and all you got is a slingshot. It's 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 not good. I mean, the odds are bad. My like the big eye-opening statement for me when I was going through my divorce was when I had the conversation with my lawyer and he's like, look, if you want to go to court, that's fine. You're my client. I'll do what you tell me to do. But you're in the worst bargaining position ever if you have the penis when you walk into the courtroom. He goes, you do not want to get yourself in that scenario. So there's alternate things that you can do leading up to the divorce, going through the divorce that nobody really can talk about. I mean, we're not even going to be able to talk about certain certain principles today in this broadcast. But um, I mean, if you want to book a one on one coaching call and get the down low, there's links down below. I mean, Donovan's talked about it. I've done hundreds of coaching calls and stuff like this. You need to open your eyes. But we're going to talk about this broadly from 20,000 feet today. I know, um, Rolo, you wanted to add. Uh, oh, wait, Ryan's got to go next. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right i'm losing track of moderating what's supposed to be going on here Sorry. that's okay but yeah i'm sort of i'm like rollo here i'm not divorced myself i am a child of divorce and so i kind of get to speak from the other side of things so the first thing i notice is a lot of guys say they're sticking it out for the kids and i think that's the worst cop out a guy can give i think i was five when my mom first got divorced and then 18 when she got the divorce the second time so here's the thing that they don't understand with kids is that we don't have the same frame of reference that adults have as a kid, to me, that was just normal. Mom left dad. I got to see dad two weeks out of the year. I didn't have a frame of reference to treat that as a chip on my shoulder. And I find most adults don't develop that chip until later on in life. So the one thing that I will say that screws up your kids is watching fighting, nagging parents. I uh, kind of gave some personal details on that on a post I did called Replacing Our Fathers, which kind of ties into Rolo's essay on Promise Keepers there. So I find the guys who use their children as an excuse not to take a risk for their own benefit, it's very disingenuous. And I think it's kind of like you're screwing up your kids just so you have an excuse not to do hard, make hard decisions. And I don't really respect that. Uh, as for tips on divorce, I know Reddit's a place for cat memes and all that stuff, but the married red pill is really a nice place. We have, I'm going to reference a lawyer that we have there, Red Curious. He's actually a Christian red pill guy here, so... But he actually has a post of his. I'll link it in our YouTube chat. And it's just a great source of information on the kind of things you want to think about. And Rich has already touched on it. Donovan's already touched on it. Rolo's already touched on it. Like, for example, if you're booking all the appointments for your kids, uh, big decision-making events, optometrists, school events, uh, all that kind of stuff, eventually you get these things documented. And then when it comes time for a custody hearing, you're in a better position to argue for what you want. I think a big reason a lot of guys lose custody is they're not willing to fight. And my stepdad was a great, great lesson for me on that. He had his divorce operation scorched earth, I call it. His <laughs> plan was basically, yeah, my mom, and she justifiably, in his case, he was not a good man. So she had a justified, like, can take him to the cleaners. Nobody's going to argue that point. So he countered that with, I will burn it all to the ground and give you half the ashes. And I'm not going to lie. That, out of all the divorces I've ever seen, the guys talking about divorce rape and stuff, if they saw this, they would shake their heads and not believe it was possible. I mean, he's a fairly wealthy guy. I think he got away with a $150 house that he offered, and that was it. And it took 10 years of her fighting to get that. My brother essentially had to file the charges for her, or the, uh, the paperwork. And so a lot of it is just being willing to show up. My seat's sinking as I go here, so this had some dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so Ryan signing off. Let's throw it back over to Rolly. He wanted to add. To that. I just I just a few things. It's, it's it's great to listen to you guys because then it sort of you know triggers ideas for me too. I think one of the things that guys need to really be aware of is if you see the writing on the wall, you need to understand that the the woman that you are in this relationship with, you know, the one that you really want to work it out with and stay together. Um, if she's checked out of the relationship and if she's planning her exit already, uh, you have to understand that it is in her best interests to turn you into a monster. OK, it is in her best interests to make it sound as if you uh, you are somebody who you actually aren't. Yes. Um, so that she can get more money or she can you know, she can get the kids or whatever else is there. So you could be the, the greatest guy in the world and wash your daughter's hair and do homework with the kids and, you know, go to little league practice and do all this great stuff and be this this great guy. But people, especially in a feminine primary social order, want to believe the worst of a man. 
So we want to say, oh, well, it's, you know, you never, it's, it's the guys who you would never suspect who are the, the most evil monsters that could possibly be. And it, the reason I say this is because if you watch Divorce, or Divorce Incorporated, yes. you will see that that is a tactic, a common tactic that, um, that women will use with their, but they're encouraged to do so by their lawyers. Because again, the longer it takes, the more money the lawyer can get out of, of the, the, the split is, you know, people want to believe, oh, well, not with my lawyer. My lawyer is going to be cool with me or why well, my lawyer is going to be all right. You know, their, their best interest is to gravy train you as much as possible. Mm. So even if you are, even if your wife is the sweetest woman in the world and you're splitting up with her and you've been the best, most perfect father and husband that you could possibly be, uh, it is in her lawyer's best interests to turn you into a monster. Now, I, I see guys do this all the time. I can't believe she did this. She turned against me. I couldn't understand why she did all this stuff. Well, the reason that she's doing that is maybe not because she's like that, but because she is being encouraged to be like that because of the divorce industry. So what happens is you'll go to like a, a lot of guys who hit me up, they'll say, you know, um, what is it? Uh, marriage counseling doesn't work. Well, yeah, of course it doesn't work. It's designed not to work. Right. There is a, there, you know, what's the first thing that that the divorce attorney is going to say? Well, did you guys try to work it out? Did things, you know, do things not go well? Well, the reason it, she's the reason that that attorney is saying that is because she wants you to go to some, you know, clinical psychologist so that it's on the books that you went mm -hmm. there, and. Even in spite of all of that, you had to, you know, you're still getting, you're still getting divorced. And uh, it turns out that uh, according to the, uh, the psychologist, that the guy is actually this horrible, evil asshole because he won't come to terms with what the woman needs out of the relationship. So that's why she's leaving. And so you've got this attorney on her side, you've got this marriage counselor on her side. And so now suddenly the guy who is this perfect, nice father is turned into this evil asshole. And so as such, you've got an already you have this industry in this society that is looking for the worst in a guy. They're looking for, they're, there's what I call an anger bias already. So the guy is already going to be presumed to be more angry than a woman ever could be because there's a there's an anger bias against men. They, uh, women will will look for signs of anger in men and it has always it, this is an evolutionary fact is that women will would err on the side of too much caution that the guy might be angry than not and so that transfers over into a societal impression that guys are always more angry or guys are always have a potential for violence or guys are always potential rapists and so that transfers over into this whole divorce process so when you go into court and you're up against maybe if it's a female judge and she's looking for the worst in you and she believes the woman long before she you know believes anything you have to say and then she thinks that you know little by little she's going to chip away at this horrible uh you know men men need to learn a lesson from this guy so she's going to make a, a an object lesson of this guy and uh give him a really shit deal in his divorce and so this sweet woman that may have decided that she wants to have some sort of amicable split has been encouraged by the the industry and by the machine to become something that she may maybe never set out to be in the first place because you have all of this preset prejudice against the guy because the more of that that they can stoke the more money that they can squeeze out of that divorce so that's something that guys need to understand because once you're in that process once you see the writing on the wall, you have to understand that any little thing you do is going to be blown completely out of proportion. I got a, I had a friend of mine who was he had had got into a fight with his, well, I think it was his second wife, and he was being very rational about it and being very you know upfront. And apparently, she was a little buzz or she was a little drunk, and she was throwing all this shit at him, and they were splitting up. And she wanted to take the car and get away, right? Well, she was drunk. And so what does a guy do? He says, no, you're not going out. You're not taking the car. You're drunk. I'm not going to have you you know, driving. So what did he do? He snatched the keys away from her. Right. And that assault, snatching, that assault, taking assault. is assault. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? The cops, she calls in, the cops come, yep. they grab him. Yep. He goes to jail. He goes back and he has, once he gets out, his, you know, once his parents, you know, his dad bails him out, now he's living at home. Now he's paying for rent 
for a place that she's living in, paying for the car that he, that he snatched the keys away from. He's a, and and you know and her kids because she was a single mother. He's paying for the kids to stay there, and it's all all of this money that goes into this. So she's living rent free for six or eight months while the divorce proceedings go through, all because he snatched the keys away because it yeah. was in the best interest of keeping her safe and off the streets. So all right. um, that's, that's the industry. That's the machine you have to be aware of. Yeah. Okay. So two more things that I want to add to this before um, I throw it off to Donovan and Carl, uh, and then we'll take calls. I want to distinguish the two different kinds of divorces you've got with kids and without kids. When you don't have children, it's fairly straightforward, right? Yeah. It's, you know, you take the assets, you put it in a pile, you slice it down the middle, you take your half, I'll take my half, see you later. Unless there's a prenup that um, sets that aside, and it's not always going to hold water. I mean, the longer, um, so the way prenups work basically, um, the more time that passes between when you sign the prenup and when you actually need it, like if it's two years versus seven years, a two year old prenup's a lot stronger than a seven year old prenup. But again, if there's no kids, it's fairly straightforward. Assets in a pile, split it down the middle, fuck off, I'll take mine and off we go, sort of thing. When it comes to kids, though, that's where things get very complicated and difficult. Um, to be involved in his children's lives. I mean, he wants to be involved in raising them, spending time with them, taking them to extracurriculars, all that sort of stuff. But the thing about family law in the Western world is it doesn't leave any incentive whatsoever for women to behave well during divorce. In fact, the opposite is true. It encourages women to behave badly throughout the course of divorce. Um, one of the things that we've talked about many times before is hypergamy. Um, I'm a believer that uh, divorce law is actually facilitated for women to optimize their hypergamy. So basically what that means is uh, they get the kids, they get the house, they get the car, and the money and they don't need your dumb ass anymore and they still have access to all the things that they had when they were married without having to put up with your shit. Um, <laughs> that's 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 literally what I've heard women tell me, you know, when I, you know, get in, get into conversations on stuff like this. Um, when they get open about it, you know, you have a couple of glasses of wine and all of a sudden, you know, they're singing like a canary sort of thing. But um, it should be noted that 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 like family law is just that way. So don't sleepwalk into it thinking, oh, well, everything will be just be tickety boo and we'll be fine sort of thing. No, fuck. It doesn't work that way. You've got to be attentive when you go through the process. You really have to plan it because I guarantee you she's planned it months in advance. Uh, I'm going to stop talking because I could keep going on about that forever. Let's throw it over. Who's next? Uh, Donovan and then Carl. Yeah, just a couple of real quick things. Uh, so, uh, something about Rolo, what Rolo said about marriage counseling being absolutely useless. It's designed not to work. I would agree, but marriage counseling, and I'm using air quotes for those of you guys just listening, I compare this to a woman who re whose end game is to get gastric bypass as a cheat code for her weight loss. But what she does as a prerequisite is she goes out and gets the fitness equipment. She gets the gym equipment. She signs up for Zumba class. This way she can tell everybody, well, I tried everything and nothing seemed to work. So now I have to have gastric bypass because I'm some genetic anomaly that requires the cheat code. What's well, the same with marriage counseling? Once a woman, once you are in marriage counseling, the marriage is already over. It, at that point, they're just looking for a reason to say, well, we tried marriage counseling, so now we really have a reason to get divorced. No, no, no. Her mind was made up before you guys set set foot into the marriage counselor into the marriage counselor. And and Richard, I, I'd actually, I'd actually like to get your 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 uh, your quick take on this after I talk about this war chest. The war chest for me. And I don't know what the laws are in Canada. If I were to have a war chest, it would be strictly off the books. Uh, I mean, basically, I'm stuffing money in a chest or not a chest, a um, a safe somewhere, maybe a safe deposit box, something that can't be traced or tracked. Because if your ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife knows that you have it, she's going to mention that. But before I get but before I get your take on that, here's one more thing that men need to understand. Do not agree to anything. Don't agree to anything verbally. Don't agree to anything. Listen, don't agree to anything verbally via text or email. Here's the thing. Women will use this tactic against you like we have all like we've all talked about earlier. Your soon to be ex-wife will try to appeal to your sense of fairness and take advantage of your provider instinct. And again, she's doing this to set you up. She knows you still love her. She knows you still love the kids. And she will attempt to get you to agree to certain things to get more shit for herself. Again, women are selfish. 
and they will use any and all techniques to get as much as they can out of you legally or legally or otherwise. Don't fall for it, guys. Don't fall for the guilt trip stuff. Well, you don't love your kids. You don't want to be a good father. This is why you need to limit your communication with her in the first place and watch what you say, write, or text to begin with. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the laws, but my guess is that that can be used against you in a court of law. And here's another thing. She could show text messages in court that 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 says that you agreed to give her a thousand dollars a month for child support she can use an email that said that you agreed to pay for health insurance she could record a phone conversation that you agreed to let her have the house or give her full custody i don't know if that's admissible but again we know how biased the court systems are so why wouldn't they don't agree to anything don't give her anything again don't and don't buy into her threats either don't buy into the well they're going to give me the house the kids the car the dogs and half your paycheck anyway so you may as well do it anyway she doesn't know one way or the other that's why she's trying to get you to agree to it anything she gets should be court ordered and negotiated through your attorneys you need to communicate with her with the mindset that she is trying to fuck you over don't try to be that good guy that shit's useless too many men get caught up in trying to look like the good guy which is understandable because women are experts at smear campaigns just like rollo said but if you agree to anything without your lawyer present you are literally you are literally fucking yourself there's no need to do any of that so richard real quick before we get to uh, uh before we get to carl i know he had something uh real quick after this what are your thoughts on on a war chest that's sort of off the books because in my estimation i say have the liquid assets that you can just open your safe and get the hell out of dodge at any time what are your thoughts on that well like legally speaking, again, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you legal advice, but from sure. my understanding on, on that and through my own experience and my conversations with my lawyer, you need to declare all of your assets, um, your liabilities, everything. Now, can you can you convert uh, some of your wealth into gold bullion, cryptocurrency, stash it in your brother's safe? Yeah, there you go. go for it. Yeah. I mean, listen, all's fair in love and war as far as I'm concerned, and family law legislation is not fucking fair. So again, if if you're going through divorce, be attentive to it. You need to plan it accordingly. You need to walk into it with your eyes. What guys don't understand what they're walking into. Guys have no fucking idea what they're walking into when it comes oh to God, divorce. Yeah. If they've never sat down with a divorce person, they've never watched a video like this, or even like just go watch the 30 minute video on my channel. It's the third most popular one. I'll dig it up before the end of the broadcast and link it so you can see it. But watch that 30 minute broadcast and you'll see guys going, yep, that was my experience in the comments and women going, you're a fucking asshole. And it's not always like that. And not when, you know, yeah, not women are like that and blah, blah, yeah, blah. It's like, yep. well, why do all these men have these experiences back to back? And I'm not talking that are all the same 10 or 100 i'm talking fucking thousands of comments from guys going yep that's that was my experience that's so right. um i mean i'm not saying this to be a dick or to be disparaging or anything like this towards it like uh, you know the other sex it's just that's the reality of the equation that you enter into so you know the war chest notion by all means you're not a fucking lawyer you're not held to these you know specific standards you know do what you got to do to make sure that you get get out the other end properly without living in your parents basement i mean there's a ton of guys out there when they get divorce raped she gets the house the car and the kids and she sees them 80 percent of the time and then he gets what my lawyer called was the every other weekend screw over the daddy deal where basically <laughs> he's you know he's got visitation rights what does that mean well if she meets chad thundercock and wants to fly off to the calgary oil uh, you know fields or something like that and live with him and change the kid's last name and introduce him to a different religion that you don't agree with uh administer medical procedures that you don't agree with she's the primary caregiver you can sit back on the sidelines twiddling your thumb writing fucking checks to her every single month mm -hmm. with access to your kids at christmas or for once a week in the summertime and watch how well she alienates you from the children mm -hmm. right yeah. i mean well, saying that happens already yeah like i'm not saying that happens all the time but that is a worst case scenario that happens more often than not than than what guys are willing to admit um anyway I'll get off my rant. Uh, no, that answers the question, though. So for yeah. all you guys who are afraid to put money in a safe or 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 give something as gifts so they can hold it on to you, dude, by all means, do it. Because trust and believe your wife is doing that kind of shady shit, too. And yeah. a local example for this, too. I think, Rich, you were just talking about this on Twitter, how Ontario just passed a law where if uh, your kid, like it's a transgender identity thing that they can take yeah. your kids from you. Yeah, I just, rolling, I just yeah. posted about that. You know, I was going to just let me interject here real quickly. Um, one of the things I constantly get feedback from women on is um, whenever I'm talking about single mothers, and we were just talking about this on Pat Campbell not too long ago, or actually we were talking about it here too. When you talk about single mothers, 
and how what the fallout is and what the statistical you know results the consequences are for that like i was i was getting into this big long twitter battle uh, with a bunch of feminists who were, um, who were talk, you know, I, I threw out there that one of the stats is like, uh, children, like boys of, uh, single mothers are, are 80% more likely to be, you know, to turn into rapists, uh, are far more likely to be criminals, far more likely. And so we're talking about this, this single motherhood thing and the results of that and why it's bad for a, a kid not to have two parents in the, in the, in the thing. Well, what's the first thing that, that women say? Well, if men would stand up and man up and right, and, right. and and then you know take over and and you know be inclusive and not be absentee parents well then what did, what does that do it gets back to the marriage thing and it's like well if it wasn't if if divorce wasn't the way it is and just everything that we've been talking about up to this point if if divorce wasn't in the state that it is right now maybe that wouldn't be such a big deal maybe maybe there would be more you know people actually wanting to get married and staying married and being good parents and putting themselves into you know dedicating themselves to be that so we don't have 80 percent of boys being rapists with single mothers and we don't have all of that fallout but the thing is is and what women will say is like and then you come out with this the stat where you say well 70 percent of divorces are initiated by women what are women going to say they're going to say well it's because men are such shit men are such shit that women 70 percent of women have to initiate the divorce well when you look at the divorce industry and everything that we've been talking about right now anything of why would guys want to get involved with that why would anybody want to do with that that's why guys want to stay in the marriage it's not because guys are like overwhelmingly assholes it's because guys are overwhelmingly beta it's because guys are if guys wanted to get out of the marriage and they wanted to be if they just wanted to leave i mean why is 40 42 percent of single or you know 42 percent of births are in the united states anyways are to single mothers I mean, why is that you got to ask these questions and it's not just because guys are assholes that you know women got to step up and, that would be and, a step and, up for guys actually <laughs> yeah and so when you look at that i mean then look at the divorce industry that's behind that of course of course 70 percent of women are going to do that you got the the divorce porn industry behind that You've got uh, attorneys, you've got psychologists, you've got everything that we've mentioned in this this podcast up to now. Of course, that's going to happen because it's it's a big meal ticket. It's a lot. It's a big big industry. G watch Divorce Incorporated. You'll understand. What I'm saying. And and by the way, guys, you know, before Carl goes and then we start taking phone calls, all of those all of those risks that I talked about with you losing access to your kids and 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 watching how the money all flows to her while all the bad shit happens, you can completely eliminate that if you have a shared parenting plan. If you execute the divorce and the parenting arrangement correctly, where you share parenting responsibilities, whatever that legislation looks like where you live, where it's described as a shared parenting arrangement, where you share decision-making capacity, where there's no unilateral choices to do weird things that you wouldn't agree with, it's gone, it's out the window. But women plan to have primary caregiving responsibilities because it gives them power and money. Carl, I'll pass it off to you before we take calls. Well, I just wanted to comment on two things, because first, to something that Rollo and Donovan both touched on, I think uh, yesterday that men change, women change their marketing. Women live in this constant marketing mode. So when they turn a guy into a monster, it's not because he necessarily is a monster or to alleviate. It's just so they can feel okay about divorcing a guy who's actually a good guy. Because they have no real cause for a divorce. That's the whole point of no fault. They can just get a divorce for whatever reason. And uh, in order to not look bad to the rest of the group, they try to market it. Oh, I'm not horrible for divorcing him. He's actually a psychopath who does all the laundry. <laughs> and uh, secondly, on marriage counseling, uh, you know, if you get a female marriage counselor, that's a great way from going from having one woman who's constantly nagging you, costing you money and won't fuck you, to having two. That's just the whole point of it. And there's no point in that, um, in going to marriage counseling. That's just negotiation before the divorce. Just pull the trigger, get the divorce, and whoever files first has an advantage because they get to set the frame of the divorce. All right. You file first, and she comes in afterwards with, oh, he's a horrible guy, he's a psychopath, he abuses me, etc. Then you just be, well, she has no proof, and she did this after I uh, filed for divorce, so it's just a strategy on her end. What do they call that? First mover advantage? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, there's some disadvantages to being the first mover when it comes to divorce because uh, levies, when it comes to women, they do not like to get left in a marriage if they want you to stay. 